ASP.NET Core provides a framework for developers to create web APIs. So in this video, let's talk about what is a web API framework. In the previous video, we have created a simple web API contains several endpoints. And I have mentioned as developer, our main purpose is to write logic and data operations within this function, right? The remotely hosted function. So let's go back to our diagram. So as developer, our main purpose is to implement these functions. So everything else needs to be taken care of by the framework. So what are those things? When I say everything else, what are those things? One of the first thing I have covered in the previous video is the routing. We have seen that with the combination of the URI and the HTTP verbs, we're able to map a HTTP request to hit a particular endpoint. So that's one of the first things. In order to talk about what is a web API framework, we just need to cover all of the other things that a web API framework needs to provide to the developer. Right? The developer doesn't have to implement those by themselves. So we cover routing. Before routing, the user of the web API, which is another application, needs to be authenticated and authorized to be able to invoke the web API endpoint. So that's what we call authentication and authorization. So authentication and authorization. And this happens before routing. And then the Web API framework needs to be able to provide the information that is contained in the HTTP request into the function as parameters. And that is called model binding, which we have actually briefly seen it. So here, this part of the URI, now it becomes an integer. So who did the magic? That's the Web API framework. Right? And this functionality of mapping the URI, or in the future you can see it's going to map from different places in the HTTP request to a parameter. This is a simple integer. In the future you may see a whole object mapped from the HTTP request to the parameter. So that's called model binding. And that's after routing. That's after we already know which endpoint to hit. And we have a functionality provided by the Web API framework, and that is called model binding. And after model binding, we need to make sure that the information that is provided as parameters to the remotely hosted function is correct. Going back to the Web API, for example, the integer here, we need to validate it because uh, sometimes the users could attack the endpoint for whatever reason, right? We have to be prepared. And sometimes user can make mistakes intentionally. That's why we always need to validate the data that comes from the HTTP request. Anything that is sent by the user cannot be trusted. So that's why we have another functionality of the Web API framework, and that is called model validation. And after model validation, we are able to just hit the endpoint, right? And when it hits the endpoint, of course, as developers, our own business logic, data retrieval, data operations are executed. But what if there is an exception? Right? So the Web API framework also needs to be able to handle exception. So if there's any exception when we execute the remotely hosted function, then the exception needs to be handled, right? So we can draw something like this exception handling so after execute this if there are exceptions exception handling component will be able to take care of that last but not least we should be able to return the data that the user requested in the format that the user requested and that's what we call the result formatting Okay, so what's going on here is that there's a request that comes in and then it goes through the authentication authorization, routing, model binding. Now we have the parameter and then we validate the parameter or parameters with the model validation and then it runs the developer's own logic. If there's any exception, the framework handle the exception. And last but not least, the result of running the Web API is formatted by the Web API framework and then the data is just returned back to the application. 
So the HTTP request goes into the Web API framework, and then the HTTP response, which is this line that is being highlighted, comes back to the user, which is the application. See, that's almost all of the functionalities that a Web API framework needs to cover. It doesn't have to be Microsoft ASP.NET Core Web API framework. Any Web API framework will need to do similar things. I hope this is helpful for you to understand what a Web API framework is. And in the future, we will cover each and every single one of these components in the Web API framework. For you as a developer to understand how these things work is very important so that you're able to focus your energy mainly on implementing the logic and data operations. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.